Pitch back throttle. And that's about it, guys. Let's do a quick line. Bring it back in. Today, what I want to do is basically talk about how to make a power loop look a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> I got a question asked around, you know, just how, how do you create tighter power loops and how do you do power loops? And if you have any tips to do power loops, you know, for for myself, um, kind of got that comment maybe a few videos back. And I thought I'll do it um, here since I'm at kind of a field that I used to practice at. If you like this video, let me know in the comments and leave a like. It just helps other people find this type of contact as well. So anyways, here we go. All right. It's a pretty sick spot. And what we're gonna do is practice with this thing right here. And it is basically a soccer goal or, or football goal, whatever you wanna call it. But it's a really good method or really good object to practice your power loops. So that's kind of what we're gonna to do today. So what is a power loop? So for anyone who doesn't know, a power loop is really fundamental to our kind of freestyle hobby. And it's basically you going around this object like this, right? You're in a circular motion, just going around it. And that's kind of what a power loop is. And why is it so difficult? Well, there's a couple of reasons why. This is kind of what happens to most people is that they do it and they overshoot the power loop. And so they're all the way back. And this is kind of what you want to get, right? You want to get tighter. So that is what we're going to practice today. And hopefully um, it helps. So the first thing you want to do from a fundamental perspective when you do a power loop is, you know, just slowly pitch back and give it gas or give it throttle, right? That is kind of the fundamental of it. So once you kind of master the power loop and you know, it's okay to kind of overshoot it in this scenario as you're learning it. But when you get better at flying, you just want to make sure you get a tight power loop. It just makes it look a little bit more better. So the first thing what I would do for a tight power loop is this, you know, just make sure you gauge what you're circling or looping over. Um, in terms of height and how much clearance you need for throttle or gas. So that's what I would do. And then, you know, just get closer and closer to it. You know, pitch faster, blip faster. Um, in order, you would want to blip faster and then pitch faster, right, to get closer to the object. So here we go. I'm just going to run through what it would look like for me to get closer and closer to the object when we, start, when we loop it around. So kind of overshot it there. Pitch overshot there a little bit. Okay, that's better. I fixed that by pitching forward. Now I just need to control that throttle because I don't want to overshoot it like I am right now. So that's a good one. See, I'm really, really closer and I'm blipping, I'm blipping a lot faster. That's better. You just gotta be quicker. You gotta get quicker. And the really the down the downside effect of this is that people that fly lower tilt generally have a bigger issue because it's a blind it's a blind maneuver for lower tilt setups. When you have a higher tilt setup, you see the actual object you're looping over, so it makes it a lot more easier to do that movement. So, anyways, let's go through a few more and then um, I'll just yeah conclude this video. So here we go. Pitch back, throttle. Pitch back, throttle. Pitch back, throttle. And that's about it, guys. Let's do a quick line. Bring it back in. So, hopefully you guys heard kind of my I don't know, general tips or quick tips on how to do a power loop. Hopefully it was helpful. Um, I do do, you know, a lot of this type of content. I'm gradually going into the advanced stuff more and more. Hope you guys have helped and see you guys next one.